In the next few minutes, we're going to show you how easy it is to install and use the Intelligent Video of IO Image. It's a five step process, and it takes less than five minutes to set up. Let's get started. Step one, plug in. Step two, browse. Step three, set depth. Step four, select rule. Step five, detect. Let's go over the basics. The IOI box has an Ethernet port with power over Ethernet, terminal block connectors for wire termination of RS-232 and RS-485, as well as dry contact connections of relay outputs and alarm inputs, a reset button for rebooting the system, power hookup, video input for video camera analog connection, bi-directional audio in and audio out connections, the splitter is included in the IOI box, and a video output for support of analog based monitoring systems. To connect the IOI box unit, simply connect the analog video output of the camera to the video input connection on the IOI box. Connect the Ethernet cable from the network to the Ethernet port and connect the power. Additionally, at this time you can connect the two-way audio, the relay output and alarm input terminal block connectors, as well as the RS-232 RS-45, which can be used with controllers for pan, tilt, zoom, camera movement. At this time, it's a good idea to note the default IP printed on the label of the IOI box unit. You'll need this for later on. Put the unit in an outdoor protective enclosure, in this case next to the camera. Depending on the installation, the IOI box can be put in the camera case, protective cabinet, on a rack, or on a shelf. By the way, this is also a good opportunity to record the camera height from the ground level where detection is to take place. For the next few steps, we will have a helper in the field with a locking tape measure to assist with custom setup. We're also going to start a timer. On the workstation, in Internet Explorer, enter the IP taken from the label on the IOI box. If you change this IP for your network requirements, enter that instead. Click Setup. In the logon prompt that appears, enter your administrator username and password and then click log on. After accessing the setup, we select analytics to begin configuring the depth. As our helper in the field travels to different locations in the scene, we will place markers to match the helper's height. To move and resize an existing marker, click and drag the marker to where the helper is seen standing. Scroll the mouse so that the marker matches the head to toe size. If the helper's height is different, Enter that in the marker properties. To add an additional marker, click the human marker tool, position it over the helper in the field, scroll to resize, and click to set. To return to select mode, click the select arrow icon. Throughout the configuration process, you can pause the video. This allows you to make configurations on a still image. By the way, there is another way to resize human markers. You can click and drag the upper and lower ends of the marker to stretch and match to a person being measured. Click the play button to return to live display of the video. At this point our helper is stretching out a tape measure to make a measurement in the field. We will match this by clicking and dragging our ground guideline endpoints and entering the length into the properties. Depth setup is complete. You may ask yourself how do we know that the measurements we just made are accurate? The IOI box allows you to do this quite easily. Select Verification, then click the Interactive Human Marker. This marker simulates the respective height of a person in the field. Move the marker around to see how the perspective sizes change within the depth. Next click the Interactive Ground Guideline, then select two points from within the scene. You'll get a readout from the system of the calculated length of that line. This value should be representative of the approximate real-world size. You can check more than one location. To save your settings, click Apply. You'll be prompted if the save is successful. Now that we've finished configuring the depth, let's move on to the definition of a detection rule. Click Rules. You see here the default full field of view is painted as a region of interest. Marked as active, the system needs only to be armed to detect. You have settings and rules to the right, and in the display window you can specify the location where detection will take place. Depending on the detection type, this can be a region, tripwire, or fence identification. 
For tripwire detection rule, it's a selection of a line that indicates the tripwire to monitor. To demonstrate tripwire configuration, we will quickly add a rule by clicking New. In the properties, indicate the detection type as Human and Vehicle Crosses Tripwire. Select the tripwire drawing tool and draw the tripwire line. By clicking these buttons, you can change the direction to detect. To better show you this, we will magnify the view and click the toolbar buttons. The default settings are optimized for most scenes and there is no sensitivity settings to make. The system automatically adjusts up to 30 times per second. Select Activate only in the rules that you want to use and then click Apply. That concludes how to install and set up detection. For turning on the detection known as arming the camera, we go back to the live view and click Arm. The IOI box will automatically watch over this area we defined. Well, that's it. IOImage offers a full range of solutions that are designed for simplicity. Feel free to check our website at ioimage.com for additional information and downloads.